Hello fellow gamers. Today I will go over my top 6 game consoles. This is the second part of my top 12 game consoles list. I recommend you see part 1 if you haven't already. Anyways, let's get on with the list. At number 6 is the Nintendo Entertainment System, most famously known as the NES. The NES is regarded as the most important console of the gaming industry. In 1983 to 1985, the video game industry was pretty much done, but in the shadows of an industry in despair, Nintendo would come along and save the industry. It was Rob the robotic operating buddy whom was supposed to save the industry, but failed to do so. However, one side-scrolling game on the NES, Super Mario Bros., would be the game that would ultimately save the industry, and make the NES a success. If you're a gamer, you owe so much respect to Super Mario Bros. for saving the industry. Without this game, game consoles might have still been a dead market. The NES would then get a huge library of games. Many of them are great classics that are still fun to play to this day. You had The Legend of Zelda, which was just an epic adventure game with so much area to explore around and requires a lot of imagination. You had Metroid, which was just an epic maze game that needed a map to make easy. You also had a lot of games made by third-party companies, most notably Konami. You had games like Castlevania, an epic Dracula-based game. You had Contra, which had the best shooting controls of any side-scrolling shooter out there. There was a lot of great classics on the console, and it saved the game industry. But why is this console at number 6 and not in the top 3? Well, the console had too many bad games. So many bad games. Probably more than half of the NES's game library are games that are absolutely terrible. In fact, the angry video game nerd has a whole ginormous collection of terrible NES games to review. Another reason is that Nintendo was an absolute monopoly back in the 1980s. Their third-party companies were more like second-party companies. Nintendo didn't let them release anything on competing consoles. That's the reason why the Sega Master System didn't do well in North America because of Nintendo monopolizing the market. If Konami was able to release games on the Sega Master System, just imagine how much superior the SMS versions of Castlevania and Contra would have been to the NES versions. At number 5 is the Sega Genesis. In 1989, this console would destroy Nintendo's monopoly and bring competition to the gaming industry with its famous advertising slogan. Genesis does what Nintendo don't. So while the NES deserves credit for saving the gaming industry, the Sega Genesis deserves credit for bringing competition to the gaming industry. Nintendo and Sega were the biggest competitors in the gaming industry. It was like McDonald's vs Burger King, or Walmart vs Target. The Sega Genesis had a great gaming library, you had all the Sonic games. The first Sonic game was a very fun game, the second Sonic game was a tremendous game, but best of all was Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles, you had Ristar, which was a great Sonic clone where you're grabbing stuff. This was the original idea for Sonic back in the early 90s, another good Sonic clone was Dynamite Heady. You also had the great version of Jurassic Park, you had the great version of Aladdin, and you had a good version of Ghostbusters. There are so many great games on the Sega Genesis. Also, being that this was the console that destroyed Nintendo's monopoly, Sega was able to get games from the third-party companies whom Nintendo during the NES days had control over, like Konami and Capcom. In fact, the Sega Genesis's version of Contra, called Contra Hardcore, was actually a lot better than the Super Nintendo's Contra 3. Sega ending Nintendo's monopoly and bringing competition was a very good thing for the gaming industry. If you know anything about business, you'll know that competition is a necessity. For all console fanboys out there, if the companies you didn't like were to drop out of the race, and the one you liked remained, that company would monopolize the whole industry. That would be very bad for the industry. Competition is a necessity. Also, I'd like to say that I really love the controller. It feels very good and solid in your hands. It's one of the best controllers out there. At number 4 is the Sony PlayStation. The PlayStation was the right console with the right games at the right moment, it's the console that made gaming a phenomenon, and went to sell over 100 million units, 
When this console came out, it was destined to end up to be a failed console like the 3DO, Jaguar, and Amiga CD32. Sony was TV Walkman VCR company, not a console manufacturer. Sony was lucky enough to have this thing sell at all, nevertheless to have it sell over 100 million units and be the best-selling home console ever at the time. Since this console sold like hotcakes, this console got tons and tons of games. The Crash Bandicoot Trilogy is my favorite linear 3D platformer series of all time. The first one was great challenging and lots of fun. The second one was an astonishing improvement. And best of all was Crash Bandicoot Warped. But even better is the Spyro Trilogy. The Spyro PS1 Trilogy is one of my favorite trilogies of games ever. As for other great games, you had Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which was one of the best side-scrollers of the fifth gaming generation. You had the original Grand Theft Auto. This is where the infamous Grand Theft Auto series all started. Oh, and who could forget Metal Gear Solid? The PlayStation was still a popular console after the PlayStation 2 came out in 2000, so Sony decided to re on the console, and out came the PS1. The PS1 is one of my favorite consoles in terms of hardware. Oh, let's not forget about the LCD screen. I hope to one day get my hands on one of those, they look really cool and cutting edge. About the games again, since there were so many games, while you had a lot of great games, you also had a ton of mediocre to terrible shovelware on the console, especially Bubsy 3D. This game is so extraordinarily atrociously terrible that it deserves to be buried in a landfill like E.T. As for the controller, I'm definitely not too fond of the original controller. It's an inferior version of the SNES controller. The DualShock controller however is my favorite controller of all time. You have your left thumb on the analog stick your right thumb on the triangle square circle and X buttons, and your index fingers on the trigger buttons, it feels very comfortable. At number 3 is the Nintendo 64. This console is just a blast, and it just had to be in the top 3. Nintendo skipped over the 32-bit era to make a 64-bit machine, and it allowed for some extraordinary 3D games. While the software library for the console is pretty small, only about 300 games. The quality far outweighs the quantity. First you had the great games made by Nintendo themselves. You had Mario 64 which started out the 3D platforming genre and was very ahead of its time when it came out. You had Zelda Ocarina of Time, which was a great astonishing beautiful adventure game. Although to be honest I do find it to be very overrated, but I digress. You had Super Smash Bros. This is where Nintendo's beloved fighting series all started. You had Paper Mario, the amazing spiritual successor to Super Mario RPG on the Super Nintendo. Nintendo made a lot of great stuff on the N64, but the best company that made games on the N64 was hands down, Rareware. This is the holy grail of the N64's library. These are some of the best games not only on the N64, but of all time. Killer Instinct Gold was a great cool fighting game, Blast Core was very great and original and lots of fun, Goldeneye. Do I really need to explain how great this game is? Diddy Kong Racing, a really good Mario Kart clone, Banjo-Kazooie, an astonishing 3D platformer that took everything from Mario 64, made it better, and starred a bear with a bird in his backpack, Jet Force Gemini, an epic third-person shooter. Action Adventure Game, Donkey Kong 64, a great leap to 3D for the Donkey Kong Country series, Perfect Dark. Just like Goldeneye, this game needs no explanation of how great it is, Banjo Tooie, the game that achieved 3D platforming perfection. One of my most favorite games of all time, Conquer's Bad Fur Day, Nuff said. Also, the N64 was the perfect party machine at the time because of its four controller ports. It was the first successful console to have four instead of two. Also, Nintendo released a huge variety of controllers for the console. They also released the console in a huge variety of colors. At number two is the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, the successor to the NES. The Super Nintendo was a huge improvement over the NES. The Super Nintendo's library was especially an improvement. You had way fewer bad games, 
and you had way more of a great, and I mean great, gaming library. The Super Nintendo was a great console in terms of both quantity and quality. First, Super Mario World. My favorite Mario game of all time. Next, Super Castlevania 4. My favorite Castlevania game of all time. Next, Super Mario Kart. This is where the beloved Mario Kart series all began. Next, Star Fox. This game with the FX chip pushed the Super Nintendo to a further potential. Next, Super Metroid. This game was so dark epic and badass, and its graphics were very good for a Super Nintendo game. But the holy grail of this console was made by you know who, of course, I'm talking about the astonishing Donkey Kong Country trilogy. The first Donkey Kong Country achieved 2D platforming perfection. It used fully rendered graphics which pushed the Super Nintendo to a further potential, and had amazing gameplay. Donkey Kong Country 2 improved the first game even further, and is one of the best games of all time, and in my opinion is the best 2D platformer of all time. Donkey Kong Country 3, in terms of gameplay, is the black sheep of the trilogy, but still a very good platformer, and astonishing graphics, even better than some PlayStation games. Oh, and let's not forget about Killer Instinct, best fighting game ever, Nuff said. And on top of all the great Super Nintendo games, you were also able to play Game Boy games on the console with the Super Game Boy. This was the best console add-on before the GameCube's Game Boy Player. At number 1 is the Sony PlayStation 2. The PlayStation 2 was the perfect console to appeal to everyone. It was the perfect DVD player for your parents, and was the perfect game console for you. There are a countless number of games on the console. While it was first only marketed as a DVD player, and had almost no real launch games, it at least had the best version of Rayman 2 at the time. But the PlayStation 2 would then evolve to become the ultimate game console, and have so many great titles. You had the epic Astonishing Jack and Daxter trilogy. If you've seen my other videos, you know that the first Jack and Daxter game is my favorite video game of all time. It's just jaw-dropping astonishingly beautiful. The collecting in this game is the best collecting experience I've had ever in a video game. It has great levels, and no low times. Jack 2 and Jack 3 were also really great 3D platformers on the PlayStation 2. They felt just epic dark and badass, and had great gun controls. Another great trilogy on the PS2 is the Ratchet and Clank trilogy. This trilogy has some of the best weapon controls ever in a video game, and had a very good storyline. Oh, and let's not forget about the Sly Cooper trilogy. Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoonus is a classic. The linear gameplay in this game is just spot on. Sly 2 Band of Thieves is the best in the trilogy. It packed stealth sandbox and 3D platforming all into one genre, and had a great story with lots of twists and turns, and had great missions. Sly 3 for me was the black sheep. I didn't like the story and didn't like the extra characters. Despite that, it's still a good game and a good closure to the Sly Cooper trilogy. Well, we went over the great platformers on the console, let's talk about the other great games on this console. You of course had the infamous Grand Theft Auto games which sold like hotcakes but caused a huge amount of controversy. I actually prefer Vice City over San Andreas, but San Andreas comes in very close second. You also had a really great Metal Gear Solid game. A really great twisted metal game. You had a very good Castlevania game. There are just so many great games on the PlayStation 2. One big negative is that the shovelware issue that the PlayStation 1 had was even worse on the PlayStation 2. Although that's expected from a console with that many games, the PS2 controller. It's the exact same as the PS1's DualShock controller. Only difference is that the triangle square circle and X buttons on the DualShock 2 are analog buttons. Other than that, it's the same controller in a different color, it's like what Will Smith said in the summertime song. If it ain't broke then don't try to fix it, so all in all, the PlayStation 2 is just absolutely the perfect game system in every way. Well, that was my top 12 game consoles lists. It ended up being longer than expected and had to be split into two parts. But longer videos have better information. Anyways, leave a comment below telling me what your top 12 game consoles are.
I'd actually prefer a video response, but comments are good too.